Ah, Konami, such a refreshing symbol. Hello, I'm Danzel Glovington, and welcome to Let's Play the Goemon Games for the N64. We're going to start with a speed run slash slight segmented run challenge-ish run of Mystical Ninja Starring Goemon. Starting with a speed run of the first objective, which is to climb Mount Fuji and get your chain pipe. But first, I'm going to get a little bit going into the music of the beginning of the game. Here it is. Now, every bit of music in this game is just phenomenal. They really went all out with it, and they deservedly received a lot of critical praise for the music in this game. This song is kind of like a rendition of the main theme from Goemon, from the intro, that you can watch in my intro video, and I'll talk about it in that one. It's kind of a variation on it that makes it sound more like you're actually in a video game, which is kind of cool. But the issue I have with it is that you don't get to hear it ever again. It comes up here once in the game, and once you exit the town and come back, it'll revert to a much more typical town theme that shows up throughout the game. But here, you get the Mystical Ninja theme song in-game. Okay, now I'm going to start the speed run to Mount Fuji. The first objective in the game is to climb Mount Fuji and get your chain pipe so you can cross the area with large gaps and star blocks on them. It's a pretty neat objective, and you can find that out by talking to people in the town. They're very helpful. There's even a fortune teller that'll always tell you what to do if you don't know. That guy there will steal your money, so you gotta jump over him. He'll take 50 off of you, and you can get 25 back if he does. So save time, jump over him, you can probably hit him with something too if you're really good. But then, to find Mount Fuji, you look for the doors with red bars. Now, like I said, I'm trying to do a segmented speedrun of this game. So, to speedrun your way up to Mount Fuji, you gotta find the right route and go through the doors the right way. Just, find, just basically want to cut yourself off as much as you can. In corners and such. So here's the first real outworld. It's a very big outer world, lots to explore, but the fastest thing you can do is go around these pink trees and sort of try to follow the edge here. This may not be a perfect speedrun, so if anyone out there has the ability to speedrun this game, I'd love to see a better attempt at it. Oh wow, that's a huge mistake right there. You should easily be able to run around that pink enemy. Um, jumping on the bridge here can save you some time. Then you jump over to, uh, yeah, skip part of the bridge there. Sort of a cut another corner any way you can climb here again that hit was a huge mistake so already uh, you can tell this is live and that this is not a 100% speed run it's just segmented speed run attempts and I'm gonna be showing off most of the game and the conditions are I won't be getting any cat dolls throughout the game the silver fortune dolls are shaped like cats and they increase your max HP they're kind of like the pieces of heart in Zelda Four of them will give you another heart, and there's gold ones, which are like heart containers and give you a full heart right away, increasing your max HP. So to speed run these ladders, you gotta find your way onto the ladder, then point the joystick in the direction that your character is facing. Then you gotta tap A like there's no tomorrow. Once you're near the top, wait for just your feet to be on the ladder. Then press A again, then you'll be able to jump off without performing the climbing off the ladder animation. This is a very fast way to get up ladders, and it's how you speed run this part of the game. Hopefully I, I can do this next section, it gets quite tricky. This ladder here is tough to get up, and these rotating platforms can really slow you down. So you make it over these, run your way in here as fast as you can to get a decent time. Now, I don't know how to do this speed run without taking damage from this guy. Find the fastest ways to go through him. But you gotta do something tricky here. And climb the side of that to get across. Nice, I did it on my first try. I really feel like that makes up for hitting the pink doll. Because if you fall there, you've wasted a lot of time. You take another hit so that your invincibility frames will let you run out there fast. And now you're continuing on a much easier portion of the speed run. You may have to jump over some projectiles or kill some enemies, but as long as you're careful, these jumps aren't too hard. Climbing the ladders might slow you down, but the risk is only time. Sometimes when you're trying to speed run, you do things like take risks that will cost you time or take risks that might actually cost you a lot of time 
if there's some, something that'll cause you make you fall down. That would definitely cost you a lot of time. So there I kind of messed up climbing the ladder, slowed me down a bit. But we'll see if uh, the time is decent. So if you can make this, you can save yourself some time. Go in here, this is the end of the objective. Quickly run up to this guy and get the dialogue to start as soon as you can. If you want to speed run the dialogue, just tap A as fast as you can. So Mukobai on this European version, I think his name is Kensuki in the uh, North American version, is impressed you've made it this far. What he does, so you have to press down if you want to speed run the dialogue. Because if you ask this, you'll hear unnecessary dialogue. He gives you a new weapon. The pipe here, if you talk to anyone in the town, you would know gives you the ability to cross large gaps. It's it's supposed to be necessary to uh, enter the first castle, Oido Castle, but there is a way to skip it. I'll show that off in a little while. It's a very, very useful weapon, and it is required to beat the game, but it is not required to beat the first castle. However, it does slow you down if you don't have it. I Okay, that was a huge mistake. If I wanted to speed run my way down this, I would immediately have gone through this door. So do that if you want to speed run it. Then you'll go out like this, jump, throw a few coins, you'll extend yourself beyond the mountain, and right before you land, watch for your shadow and press B. He'll bring out his pipe and you'll skip any possible fall time penalty. You press right C to bring up the minimap. It's not that useful, but it's kind of cool if you don't know where you're going. So that's a huge speedrun thing that I just showed you. If you're about to land and take a fall time penalty, which happens, there's a bit of recoil, you just press B really quickly and you will bring out your weapon and that fall penalty will not take place. You'll just be able to keep on running. So the game's got some tricky platforming and camera angles to deal with, but if you're good and if you've played it enough, you can just walk on the sides of the bridge walk on really thin ledges, not fall off the edge, and actually find ways to get, get some challenge out of it, even though it's a very easy game. And like I said, I like my games easy. So I'll end the speedrun portion of the video here, and now just sort of play around. I'm going to go into the town and actually purchase items. I said I wasn't going to collect any cats and that I would have five hearts for the whole run, and that's going to remain true. But I'm going to run and buy items such as armor and rice balls. These items help you in the game by replenishing your life when your hearts get to zero, or giving you extra hits that don't actually cause you to go into a hit animation. That can help for speedruns, so if anyone wants to compete with my speedrun of certain portions of this, keep in mind what is in my inventory while I do it. Let's check out the coffee shop. Every coffee shop is kind of like a save point. Well, it's not a save point, but it's kind of like a map point. But we'll get to the map once that happens in the game. You can get the map right here. Talk to this guy, and he'll offer you the map. He says he'll give it to you for a discount, but it's actually free. I'm just going to say, no way, forget it. You get the map later automatically in the game. And actually, if you wanted to 100% speedrun the game, you would simply skip this coffee shop altogether. It is not required to even 100% the game to go into this. You get the map later automatically, and it's not a big deal because you don't need it until you get it at that point. So, there is a, a silver fortune doll on Mount Fuji I didn't get, and that's, like I said, because I'm not collecting them. There's another one here. You can even see it. The draw distance in this game is not that bad. It's way out there, that tiny little white dot. To get it, you have to cross two bridges, as you can see. I don't need it, I don't want it, so I'm not even going to go over there and show it to you. I'm just going to head back into town and buy my items before I go into the castle. Then I'll stop the video and we'll have our first episode wrapped up and ready to go. Once I, once I practice the castle enough, I'll show you a segmented speedrun of that and then we'll get to the first really big good nice boss fight of the game. The boss fights in this game are spectacular, just like a lot of it. And I'll do some challenge runs of the bosses that I'll show you later. Hey, why don't I show you what the fortune teller looks like. So if you're stumped, you can come into this section. And this guy will solve your problems. What he does is basically tell you exactly what to do next for this much money pretty interesting. 
I'll worry for the rest of my life because I know what I'm doing. That's right, you never need to use him. He's, he's there to help you and it's a hint system that's very nice. Another one of those things that makes the game really easy for you. You don't have to even worry about figuring out the next part of the game. It'll tell it for you. So now we're in town and I got the chain pipe so I'm ready to go to that section with a large gap. Um, yeah, the speed running, it's right there. So if you wanted to speed run, just go straight to it. Uh, before we do that, I'm going to go buy some items in the town. Some nice things there you can buy to help you run the castle. It's going to cost me coins, but there's a section in the castle that I'm actually going to show off camera. Not going to show, I'm going to do it off camera. Where you can collect coins indefinitely. It's very cool. So these are your apartments. Anyone that lives here is your tenant, I think. Uh, you eventually get the lord and lady staying in this one. Probably the nicest. So the people, the politicians end up staying in this one, the one you start in. And as you can see, the town music has reverted to this very typical sounding town music, which you'll hear throughout the game. This song even has more variations than Mystical Ninja's Star and Goemon theme. So we'll go in here and show you the save system of the game, and why not save? I'm not doing a true speedrun, so I don't care about game clock. To save, you go into an inn and click Adventure Diary. It's pretty cool. Boom. The controller pack has done its job. Thanks, controller pack. At least you can actually play the game without one. So each town has a, a, a restaurant, an inn, and an item shop. What do we have here is the item shop. I don't have much money, so we'll see what I can afford. The best item here by far is the metal armor. This allows five attacks to just sort of hit you, so you can run into enemies. If I had bought a piece of armor before doing the Mount Fuji speed run, it would have gone faster since I took damage, and I took intentional damage to save time. So this is a good way to make your speedruns better, but if you're competing with mine, I didn't use any for this particular segment of the game. I can't afford the, the better one, so I'll buy straw armor, which only gives you three. Unfortunately, I can't afford the sombrero, which is just the Mexican word for hat. I don't really get it, but it gives you three projectile defenses. So projecting, protecting yourself from projectiles is nice too, since you have to jump over them just like enemies, but you can't kill them just with the B button. Restaurants sell, sell objects that replenish your HP. The general stores, a third option you can go to in every town, sell rice balls. The rice balls automatically recover your strength when it reaches zero. They're very useful, but I can't afford one right now. If you have them, you can stop yourself from dying and just keep on playing. It instantly happens, so it's very useful, and useful for speedruns involving hurting yourself. I'm definitely going to be running around with rice balls in my inventory. Here's the restaurant I was mentioning. Each of these items will simply refill some of your health. Very nice. 15 coins for 2 health points. Useful. Other ways you can refill your health with money are going into the inns and spending a night and going into coffee shops. Every town has a coffee shop. Here's the Oido coffee shop. Probably the most effort filled coffee shop in the game, right off the bat. You're given, you're given different music for it. And this character's in it, a unique character. If you talk to her with Goemon or Ibisumaro, you'll get different dialogue. Here's Ibisumaro's. It's the only one you're going to get to see. This character, Omitsu, is Goemon's girlfriend. She's one badass motherfucker. She just wants the aliens to be the customers. She even knows their language. Quite impressive. Anyway, that's a about all I want. I'll want. i be able to show in the town now that I only have 21 Ryo. So I might as well go to the castle, right? I'll head to the castle. I already showed you the route to speedrun it from the highway when you're done with Mount Fuji. So I won't bother actually speedrunning highway to the castle run. It kind of seems pointless to me. But... 
I will speed run the castle in the next episode, and then probably do my challenge runs of the boss fights, which I'll be able to explain the conditions of those later. Alright, well that about does it for this one. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for some epic boss battles in the next part. This has been Danzel Glovington.